uh, Sujo, further moving further, uh, what future goals or projects do you have in mind to f uh, uh, further promote and inclu uh, the inclusion for individuals with uh, autism? Further, your future goals and initiatives that you have in mind? So, most of my work focuses on people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. So, my goals tend to be in that direction and my current goal is to complete my PhD okay. um, but I have recently developed some new training offerings that focus on the difference between understanding autism as a neurotype and understanding it as a pattern of behaviors mm -hmm. because it's, it is often actually described I've seen it described on training days as autism is a pattern of behaviors you're like no <laughs> like Autistic people do have patterns to their behaviours, but it, it's not a pattern of behaviour. It's, it's a neurotype. And the distinction, it feels like a fussy one at the start, but it they lead you on different paths and you end up with very different understandings at the end. And so I am continuing to develop what I offer it, through my training in order to hopefully carry on sharing mm. the sort of knowledge and understanding that, will create the changes that we all hope to see but I'm only one person so I'm, it's only a little bit yeah yeah uh, could you please uh, tell us about your um, doctorate that you are doing it's a very very uh, fantastic topic uh, I can see that uh, that you are doing the identity and belonging for people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities could, would you like to share shed some light on it it's such a dangerous question to ask me because I'll tell you far too much about it. But it is um, you have doing a PhD is horrifically difficult. So you have to have a topic that you will want to carry on. And I definitely have that topic. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm looking at doing is research with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. And, and that with is very significant. Because previously, research has been done on people with disabilities in, in a really horrible way, like in the way that we would do research on animals. They have been considered less than, and so it's okay for us to test things on them. And then as we moved forwards in our understanding, we stopped doing that. And we only did it if it was for those people. So initially, when that move is made, it's not much of a move. We're still testing stuff on them, but we're testing their medications on them or something like that. And then it progresses a bit further and people say, no, it should be for them. It should be about finding out about the things they want to know about. They should have some involvement with this. And then you get that move from for to with. We will collaborate with people with learning disabilities and we will do research together. And there is, um, it's been the inclusive research movement is about 20 years old, I'd say. And there is some lovely reflective um, writing, uh, looking at the history of the movement and saying, look how far we've come, look what value is added to research by including these people. Um, but we haven't yet found ways of doing research with people with profound intellectual disabilities because research is always framed as an intellectual pursuit and they are by definition people without intellectual capacity if if you have any degree of intellectual capacity then you don't have a profound intellectual impairment so you, you would fall out of that moniker of profound intellectual and multiple disabilities and so in my work I, I have two phases of it. The first phase is to figure out a research methodology that I can meaningfully use with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities so that we can do research together. And then the second phase is to do that research. And so our research is about embodied identity. And I am three quarters of the way through the first phase. So I have um, three people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities that I am collaborating with mm -hmm. and we recognize that meaning is not just encountered intellectually meaning is felt meaning is embodied meaning is sensed 
And so we work to create a research space that we can occupy together. And I have to be very careful because there are lots of spaces that I can occupy. I need to ensure that our research space is a place that we both occupy as equals. And it it's not a kind of perfect equality where we're the same. It's more of a, a scales that tip sometimes this way and tip sometimes that way. And, is you know, we're more or less the same at, at, at points. I might be the more able and at points they're the more able. And so our research takes place in the present moment because they don't have an anticipation of the future and they don't have brains that can lay down memories. And it is about experience in the present moment and then into those present moment together. I, I call it being with, which is too simple a word to describe how profound the experience is because I spend a lot of time with the people that I'm collaborating with Okay. trying to get to that research space okay. it's not the being with is not simply like I sat beside them like I'm physically with them great I'm geographically with them awesome I could sit beside them and they wouldn't even know I was there so I, I can't say that I'm being with them unless there is a connected mm -hmm. felt experience of belonging mm -hmm. so we find that being with and then into that experience of being with I'm introducing, so if people, I'm very active on social media and people are very welcome to connect with me across my, you know, my Facebook and my Twitter and LinkedIn. And if you do that, you will see pictures of the way that I'm asking the second research question. So the, the first question is, how do we do this research? And then the second question is the question about embodied identity. But of course, I can't ask this with words because the people that I'm collaborating with don't use words then they don't have meaning so I'm asking it through very strange objects I have a I have a giant blue egg and I have um, some sleeves that are made of ping pong balls and we experience these objects together and then um, I hope to be able to report in due course about what we learn together about embodied identity I'm sure I'm sure all the best for it I'm thank sure. you i need it yeah so wonderful wonderful talking to you joe and f finally this brings to an end uh, to the wonderful talk uh with jonah grace i wish we could have continued this on uh -huh. i really love talking to you joe thank you yeah so joe you truly exemplify the sense of a change maker your dedication to advocating for the rights of neurodivergent people and coupled with your impressive body of work and captivating presentations that you do for the community has undoubtedly uh, transformed countless lives. Your impact is felt not only within your immediate community or state, but also on a global level. So as we continue to strive for a more inclusive and equitable world, I really wish you all the best. You really, really serve as a shining example of what can be achieved through compassion, authenticity, and an unwavering commitment to change. So thank you so much, Joe. Thank you for being uh, online with us, with our audience, and wishing you all the very best and good luck for your future and love to your son. Thank you so much. Your kindness has made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't be you are, you are such a uh, lovely person an emotional person that Thank I you. can see uh, and uh, really really great to connect to you and more power to you hope to see you in another talk sometime soon bye bye awesome. yeah bye 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 bye